This episode is sponsored by Evolve Bootcamp, my outdoor functional fitness program that delivers a sense of warmth, friendliness, and spirit, along with butt-kicking, hellishly fun-filled workouts that embody a caring attitude evoking the idea everybody that exercises outside has no boundaries and naturally evolves. Class begins at 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mention this podcast and come by for a trial class at the Boston Common, if you dare. Welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast featuring the greatest upcoming female fighters on the planet. They are women who have gone against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. These fighters inspire, empower, and unleash excellence within a new generation of female athletes as they rise and evolve into the best possible version of themselves through the power of mixed martial arts. Hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA, and I'm your host, Shelly Devon. So I'm really excited to share with you all. This was, it seemed like a last minute thing. I know for me, it was a last minute thing to find out about. Well, Invicta FC 54 is coming here to Boston, my hometown. So some of you folks may have been following mixed martial arts or MMA since it began with the Gracie some 20 years ago. I know we have a huge following here in the Boston area and in New England. And you've watched its evolution from being perceived as cockfighting to a blood sport to becoming an actual recognized global sport. And some of you may even remember, you know, when Dana White came onto this scene and started the Ultimate Fighter show. And years later, he swore that women would never enter the cage. Well, I think when he stated that it was some 11 years ago and since then Invicta FC began thanks to the progressive vision of Shannon Knapp and today we see more women making a career in sports and we're here to stay. So having Invicta come to Boston is yet another milestone in the journey of mixed martial arts. I mean, geez, it took 11 years for them to actually have a live show in Boston on October 27th at the House of Blues. It's, it's the first time here in Boston, and I'm thrilled and excited to see this happen and hope it will inspire more young girls and boys too. But I'm for the girls, I'm rooting for the girls and female athletes. And I'm so honored to have the opportunity to speak with some of these fighters And uh, this show, as well as several ones that I'm gonna be pushing out this week for your enjoyment to listen to and catch up with some of the the new fighters that have come onto the scene. Um, I would say it's like the next generation. So my next guest is a multi-talented athlete. She's a featherweight MMA world and European champion, an eight-time world games medalist, and a four-time national champion in judo and sumo wrestling. She's also a podcast TV presenter, and this 33-year-old German fighter is coming to Boston to collide this week against Rad Riley Martinez here in Boston at the House of Blues on October 27th at Invicta 54. Can't wait to see your fight. I'd like to welcome to the show Invicta FC featherweight fighter, Julia Dorney. Oh, welcome to the show, Julia. I'm so happy to have you here. You must be going a little bit crazy. We're getting so close. I mean, we're what, four days away from your big Invicta fight. That's very true, Shelly. Um, yeah, actually, in fact, I'm flying into Boston tomorrow. And obviously, I still have to pack, you know, take care of like a lot of things, you know, obviously, I don't want to forget anything. And then here we go. It's fight yeah. time. Yeah. So you're in Florida. That's right. I'm in Florida. I'm in Coconut oh. Creek. Ah, oh, so you train with a the top team. That's correct. Awesome. So when did you join that camp? Um, I moved here uh, about 10 months ago from Germany, obviously, to pursue my fighting career. 
And ever since I've been training there and I love this facility, I love the coaches, I love the people. Yeah. It's a great environment, you know, it gives you a lot of opportunities, obviously, to train with the best fighters in the world. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Wow. So that's really awesome. That's a big move from Germany to come here um, on your own. And and what, what was the transition from, you know, deciding? What, what did that entail? You were just like, yeah, I'm going or I'm a little like... I'm a little kind of, you know, like just a little like nervous about being in another country and. Well, in fact, I was always planning, you know, to move overseas, mm -hmm. but obviously I also like had my studies in between. So I had my master, my bachelor's done, my master's done. And then I last, last year, I just had finished a um, journalistic video training or journalistic training. It's called voluntariat. Anyway, I wanted to finish that, you know, so my CV is like, all clear good to go nice. and then I was like okay now I'm just gonna do it you know I'm I will have I have I will have to show the guts that I have inside me to just do that and obviously it's not just another country it's another continent you believe me like everything mm -hmm. is so different from what you're used to obviously like coming here by myself obviously I miss I mean a lot of people actually moved here right like like right. let's put it like this yeah. but at the gym there's a lot of people that actually moved in order to pursue their fighting career right so I'm like right. okay there I feel like I'm part of the little like of the big something you know yeah but obviously like when I'm on my own you know dealing with my stuff it's like kind of hard also like in regards to time difference and so sometimes I need to get a really early in the morning obviously like to get hold of the people like to do my work emails and like to talk to the people because six hours don't seem much but it is but oh. it is and oh, yeah. um so yeah, that was not easy. And obviously I'm still not where I want to be, but obviously like I came here with two suitcases, you know, now <laughs> I have a fully ap um, furnished apartment. Wow. And um, I mean, I feel like the future has something great for me, you know? Well, you're at a great camp. I mean, a lot of, you know, well, we know who came out of there. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of a lot of really great success stories coming from that gym. So you're in a good place for sure. Was that your top pick? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, it was. It was. Obviously, when I first came here, I still had my apartment in Germany and like a little, uh -huh. you know, backup. Like, let's uh -huh. say I didn't work out and stuff because I also needed to do my tryout training and everything. But, you know, after after that, I was like they, they, when they welcomed me to the team, I was like, yes, yeah. made it like. You know, and so in summer, obviously, I traveled back to Germany, to Berlin. I'm from Berlin, from East Berlin, by the way. Oh, wow. Um, to sell everything over there, you know, put my life into boxes, get it to my friend's attic. Wow. You know, sell everything and like know that the people that I love and that I care for, I won't see them. And if I obviously, because, right. you know, like even let's say you have a straight flight from Miami or Fort Lauderdale going right. to Berlin. It's yeah. still like 10, 11 hours. And then like just to fly it and then obviously I don't know yeah. so I'm like okay uh when when my friends family and people ask me like hey when are you coming back I'm like well huh. let me be here first um yeah. let me take care Why of some come things and visit? Like, <laughs> come and visit come and yeah. visit like honestly like I'm not a big fan of the cold I don't like the fall that we have in Germany I don't like the you know the winter and stuff so for me uh -huh. summer and spring is definitely my season yeah. so you know when I when I look out here I'm like okay this is perfect like why would uh -huh. I travel to the cold okay obviously you want to see my people but you know like right. come here like let's let's enjoy some time in Florida together you know yeah and you don't have to pack that much either going there you need lighter clothes and stuff too where you are you come up here you're going to be like oh I need a jacket <laughs> I hope you're prepared you'll need a little like a good sweatshirt or something right now right. um but um when when do you guys when do you head up here to oh, I, I'm assuming you're in Boston yes yes um obviously um tomorrow like 11 42 the plane goes to to boston and then we're there one one day early but i wanted to be sure in advance because last time when i fought for pfl uh my plane was delayed and we got there so so late like and then like all the medic medicals and stuff like by the time i was in bed it was like 3 a.m and obviously yeah. the first media thing was yeah. taking like at 9 or 10 in the morning and i was so so tired right. and I was like no this is not ever going to happen again like I you know I'm German I'm always yeah. on point and yeah. I like to be early right. and so this is what I thought I thought for this one too you know yeah. whatever so tell me since you mentioned PFL okay and I, I know you're you're coming into this is your first fight for Invicta right 
That's right. Yeah. So, and, and you have three professional, but you have like a, a solid amateur record. Like, I mean, you, you just kick an ass along the way, <laughs> but, but, um, you're coming off of a loss from PFL during their Challengers series um, against Jeslin. So how does that affect you coming into this fight? I, I know you're like a very accomplished um, MM, mixed martial arts player. You've you've dabbled in judo, sumo. We have to talk about a little bit because that is just beyond me. I don't know. You're the first person I know that now who's done sumo. I'm like, how do you do it? I just expect big guys, you know, like doing it. I don't know. So anyways, that aside, um, uh, how, how do you feel coming off of a loss and then going into a new promotion and, uh, facing, um, she's a new challenger to, to, um, to coming to Invicta too as well. But how do you feel about all that? You know what? Like one of my very like favorites to say is like, Hey, heroes have scars. <laughs> So, you know, I fought like, I'm 33. I've been in judo for 27. Obviously, I had like over 800 fights in judo. And there were a lot of wins, like a lot of wins yeah. and also some losses, you know. But I feel like losses are important every here and then. They they challenge you. They show you like, you know, your middle, um, little tiny mistakes, you know, like yeah. whatever. So I feel like obviously it hurts. It sucks you have to take it but you just have to take it like a hero you know what i mean yeah. like look at all the champions in the ufc like look at all the champions in bellator whatever promotion or like in other sports they all had losses at one point you know right. but you should not be letting them get to you this is this is part of the game this is like one of the toughest sports in the world and everybody who fights knows yeah. how things can you know turn out like you know and then sometimes it's also a tiny little bit of everything you know, when I look back at PFL, there mm -hmm. were so many things not in the right place. For example, my, my coach couldn't come. He had COVID. So I needed a complete different corner. Wow. Then, you know, like a lot of things. Yeah. Whatever. And yeah. then also like you, you, I, I'm sure you saw that. Like I got need like yeah. really badly in my, yeah. you know, private yeah. area. Yeah. You know, and I feel yeah. like the judge yeah. and everybody in the, in the, in the jury saw it. They were like, Oh, oh. Right. yeah. Such a... like for men, hundred yeah. percent, they would have stopped it. And yeah. I can just tell you like everybody who got need, how much it hurts and how it changes you, you know, right. you're, not, you're not the self, like it takes power right. away, whatever. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying, you know, it happens. It happened. Yeah. Yes. And a, hey, I moved on, you know, like right. this is in the past and yeah. I'm a complete, like, different version of myself i think this was also important because this led me to being in the states training at american top team you know like wow whatever no, it was a it was a huge transition for you coming off of that fight you just you make some really life-changing decisions for yourself but i guess it was important yeah. i feel like the yeah. the lord or the universe or the energies had yeah. shown me look julia like you have great potential like you have yeah. proven that you've been a great athlete like in the several martial arts you know mm -hmm. but in order to do this mma thing like right yeah think about some changes and here i am in coconut yeah. creek <laughs> wow well you sound very accomplished and it's not just in in your athleticism but also in in you know going to school you mentioned earlier that you have a master's what it what have you what what has been your focus for you know college wise in learning education wise what was your your uh, background um yeah i studied journalism and corporate communication and my bachelor's and i did my master's in media studies mm -hmm. and funny thing i don't know like the other day i did a q a on my instagram and obviously uh you know people have like all kinds of questions and they were like hey what would you be doing if you would have not pursued a fighting yeah. And I was like, you know what, by now I would be a PhD because like after I, I was done with my master's, I mm -hmm. had the chance to to do a PhD, like a doctorate in my subject. Yeah. But obviously, like maybe let's say never minded or like a little <laughs> like, no, I'm like, no, I want to, you know, pursue my TV career as an anchor and like do my like editor stuff and cut videos and like go out with my microphone. And I'm going to fight because I feel like my PhD, like let's say I still want to, I could always do it, you know right absolutely. so obviously there's only one time in your life where you're young and where yeah. you're like let's say like I feel like my clock already is going backward you know since I'm 33 yeah I have probably like three four more good years yeah you know yeah like, fight years I've, stuff yeah like fight years I've fought so much in my life I've fought yeah. on all the 
dojos and tatamis all over the world. Yeah. yeah. I competed a lot in so many sports. I feel like, you know, I'm enjoying it right now, like a lot. Yeah. And I would probably regret it if I would have not done it. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm also looking forward to, you know, working in my, oh, I hate this phrase, but nine to five job, you know, and on yeah, the yeah, weekends yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. you know, I know, it's just a different chapter, but you like, what you've achieved in your like, let's say mid thirties, nobody can take this away from you. This is always like part of your own legacy. I you know? know, I know. It's amazing. You're, it sounds like you're a real good planner because, um, you know, being an athlete all these years and then to planning your education around something that you obviously love. I mean, you can go into sports journalism, anything like you could still be involved in MMA without, you know, and, and have a really wonderful career aside from fighting. Many have done that already. Uh, you'll see some of the other female fighters and male fighters, they, they become anchors and they're reporting on, on, um, you know, this sport. So I could see, how that would be i mean that's like yeah i've already done this yeah. and also in english language yeah. because i was working for deutsche welle it's like an international yeah. broadcaster just like you know bbc and stuff wow so this is perfect like i got all the training yeah. i got all the degrees i have like a lot of practice like in and outside the cage you know what i mean <laughs> so i feel like and also like when i was young i was pretty smart about that like mm -hmm. I, I knew like you stand better on two legs right in german we say that we stand the south zwei by means yeah. if you just play the one card like being an athlete you know how you can have injuries how covid like cuts you off like you remember back in the days in germany everything was closed for two years everything uh, so i'm like okay like this is just i don't know very naive to think that just the athletics and uh, the sport or whatever the you know that fight dream is just one thing like you have to be smart obviously I, mm -hmm. I was it's true that's why obviously I also moved here a little late I'm gonna say because I was like I wanted to be ready with one thing first mm -hmm. and obviously like throughout the time I was studying and everything I was still like training a lot and fighting and coaching and doing all that and people ask me like hey how do you balance your life I'm like balance <laughs> can you eat this <laughs> balance is always no, like, it's always I like always, yeah <laughs> It's always right. an ebb and flow. And then right. one second, you might have a little bit, or one day, you might have, oh, wow, I just, yeah, I feel like, ooh, at peace, all this, everything feels right. like everything's right in the world, and then slam, something comes in the next day. So you you did, you started at like seven years old with judo, is that correct? That's correct. And, Look, my, and, my tattoos, this is judo. Oh, love, wow. loyalty, and judo. What does it say? What does it say? The tattoo? Love. Loyalty and judo. Ah, nice. And judo, it's a funny thing though. Like I was thinking about it. Like you know, judo means yeah. like the gentle way. Yeah. Whatever. Like Julia Dorney put the first two letters of each names. Nice. Judo. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Judo. It was meant to be, you know. Yes, I like it. Very neat. Did your folks, what are they? I mean, like, were you like just a little kid and do you have other siblings? Uh, I do have other siblings, but they're way younger than me. My middle brother, Maxime, is 20 and my youngest one is 14. Okay. And I've, I've actually, I'm, I'm the only fighter in the family. That's what I was like, wondering. That was going to be my next question. I'm like, how did that happen? Is there any his? Like I was trying to figure out because I'm really the only one in my family that had a proclivity and I found out about it later on in life. I was much older when I decided to hit a kickboxing gym, which led to everything that I, you know, I trained. I did. I never got, got I was too old to, to get in the ring, you know, and stuff, but, but I never knew that. And it's like trying to figure out like, where did that come from? And lo and behold, on my father's side, he had cousins that were big boxers, like champion boxers. I was like, oh, so I'm the one that got the gene. So where did you get the gene from? <laughs> well, like my my mom, and she was a professional volleyball player. Okay. My um my dad was a lifter, you know. So I think I have this genetics, like you know, like yeah. definitely doing some kind of sport. Sure. And my my brothers, like my youngest brother, no, actually both of them tried. Like I had both them both of them in my judo classes and stuff. Uh -huh. But for Maxime, it really was not it. Like he, he doesn't like to, he would always say like, yeah, you can do the technique on me, but I don't want to do it on you. He was, he's, he has such a good, he's, like, yeah, he doesn't want to hurt you. <laughs> but also he's so, they're both so tall. Like I'm 5'10 yeah. and yeah. they're like, even like way taller than me. What? So obviously both of them ended up in basketball and my youngest brother was just nominated to the um, national team, to the junior national team, just like me when I was that age, you know? 
Wow, you're five and my, ten. Yeah. You look teeny. You look teeny on screen. You look really tiny. Like For real? You, yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's just the whatever. I'm. I just and even when I've looked at your pictures, I'm like, she looks like a teeny. I'm like, and then she's she's fighting at what? What? What's the weight? Uh, one four. What if one forty five? Five. And I'm like, she looks like she's like a 115 or something. I'm like, <gasps> pictures, it's photographs. You can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> so you like really see, you know, see a person. And I'm like, you look so, so teeny. Like, yeah. I'm like, wow. Well, I, this is, that's why I actually have the name German tank. Like, because yeah. I'm very tall for my division too. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, her, I mean, like her nickname. And I'm like, but I'm looking at her. I'm like, she don't look like a tank. <laughs> Going will on. I will I see you in person at the at the fight? I hope so. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm definitely coming down. And um, I I know some of the. Well, I don't want to say where, but I know some of them were staying, you know, locally, um, a, a little outside the city. And and I may try to stop in and and try and see the girls before uh, a couple of days before and see what's going on, just to say hi and see how you know yeah. weight cuts are going. Or I I mean I don't know like all that stuff. Do you have to cut weight like majorly, or are you? Are you pretty no, I'm always staying very close around. to my fight weight. Yeah. Always. But obviously, like in the last weeks, you really pay attention because like I'm already pretty lean. Yeah. And um, also very low in body fat. So obviously now it's the time to really check on it. So I'm like three kilos over right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, what is it like? I don't know about pounds. I don't know sorry. pounds. I can look on, like I can look it up, but I, I don't know how many pounds that is. And it doesn't, so, you know, you know, you know it's just, you know it's be. just, I, I'll keep hydrated as long as I can be. And obviously you still eat, but not as much like little portions and stuff. So I'll be fine. I don't worry about that at all. Like I'm so experienced, you know, I've been cutting weight since I was 12 right. and right. never failed. Yeah. And obviously it's hard. This is like the first fight that you actually have, you know, the scale. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get back and circle back to the judo stuff. You, I mean, you started at seven years old and then, and then you competed heavily like in, in, in those fields. And then uh, how did you get into sumo wrestling? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm this is such a there. funny story. Cause I, I really love, I love telling it. Cause um, <laughs> obviously I went to a special school, school for um, yeah, sports for judo for like all Olympic sports, you know, like you have yeah. to nominate to actually go to that school. So actually, so I went there and uh, you obviously still have your home club and then one of my first coaches his name is Raina at one point when I had started MMA we were on his son's birthday party because we've always been training together and he's like hey I have a surprise for you I'm like Raina what's going on what is what's the surprise yeah I signed you up for the uh, German championships in sumo wrestling and he knew that I'm always down for like that kind of stuff, like, you know, trying new things, like <laughs> whatever. Like when wow. you're like good in like wrestling and judo, you obviously have a good chance to be successful in sumo as well, you know? Yeah. Because um, the thing is with sumo, like the only thing that is allowed to touch the ground is the feet. If let's say your tip of the hair touches the ground, you lose or your knee goes down. You can do the best technique in the world, but your knee goes down, you lose, whatever. Oh. So anyway, he signed me up knowing that I'm really good at judo, obviously. And... Wow. He was just so confident. He was like, I know you will do it. Wow. So we had like practice sumo, like, I don't know, sure, maybe one or two times before the actual fight. Wow. They put the mavashi, like, you know, those yeah. like, people say diapers. I say yes, mavashi. They put this around my, my hip. And so I was training with the heavy guys and, you know, you know, the start and shooting and the ceremony and how you like show you have no weapons and stuff. Yeah. So... Yeah, I went there and eventually I, I beat the former world champion herself uh, for the final. Great. So then I became national champion and like third in open division. And then they had sent me to the Europeans where I placed third. And then they sent me to the world championships in, wow. in, in Mongolia and I placed fifth. Wow. And then I went to Mongolia. You know, and all last yeah, one. with all those like points that I gained in this like world ranking list, I was able to go to the uh, world games, which is like the Olympic games of the non Olympic sports. So I competed there in sumo as well. So that was my little like jumo, uh, sumo journey, you know, just like as a part of like seeing like MMA or martial arts as like a global thing, you know, because in every sport, obviously, you take something out for yourself for, for the MMA, for the page right. stuff yeah so and, and sumo it's so interesting because first of all it's really fast really really fast like when you start it's fast boom then you also have to have power 
Mm. And um, also yours, it's called doyo. It's it's like a round thing, right? And mm. you're so, so close to your opponent before the fight actually starts. Like some people are not even able to look somebody in the eyes because right. it's so close. It's like, right. you know, some people feel intimidated or whatever. Right. So sure. that was my little sumo journey. And obviously like people ask me, hey, are you ever going to pursue in that sport again? I'm like, hey, you know what? I love that sport. Mm -hmm. And if my schedule allows it, like at any point, um, I'll I'll go. Oh yeah, what was it in 2019? I actually fought in the U.S. Open too. Like it's a big thing, U.S. Open in wow. Long Beach, California. I placed second. Good for you. That's awesome. I just think it's amazing that um, you you had that experience of of being in the close proximity. You know, looking in somebody's eyes, dealing with intimidation, like a, a you know a really good practice for that. And then, and then you had said the strength thing, you really got to be able to, I guess, lift your opponent and toss them. Right. Yes. So yes. that's also because there's, there's one rule in sumo, which is really, really interesting because mm. when you have to complete control over your opponent, let's say you grab them a vashi like, like yeah. this and you, you grab them and you actually put them out outside the door. You, even though you stepped out first, you will still win that fight because you had hundred percent control over your opponent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying like the strength, yeah. like really like picking it up, putting yeah. it somewhere yeah very interesting and and knowing how to kind of manage that too i know like uh years ago in some of the jujitsu uh training like when you were learning hip tosses or takedowns and and the guys would show um us how to you know lift or do like a fireman's carry or something like that and and then um you know i was able to do it just because you knew how to offset you know the body or whatever and i'm like wow it it it's so intimidating to your average person, put it that way. So when you're doing it, people must be, I mean, they, your friends must have been like, I knew you were going to kill it. But what do your folks think when you're doing stuff like that? And you're just going off the cuff and 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 going into some some new realm that I don't know, it could be, I don't know. You know, at one point I was like, people must think I'm crazy, whatever. I let it, I let them think whatever they want. Yeah. I just want to try it. You know, I feel like this is all in, in regards to experience, life experience, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, obviously like they're, they think it's super cool and fun. And when they see me, they obviously expect like heavy people, but you know, in amateur, amateur sumo, there yeah. is actually weight classes. And what yeah. they, what people usually know is the, the pro man's division. There's yeah, that's only all open I've weight. ever seen. I've never seen yeah. women. So what do you wear for a top? <laughs> I have like a I have like a wrestling tricot with my national flag on it. Okay. Like a new, normal wrestling tricot and yeah. the mabashi. Yeah, wow. And I actually I forgot to mention something about the rules. Because yeah. in sumo, there you're all also allowed to do like hits, like not like a like a hook, smack, like a like a like a, a, like a bitch, a bitch slap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and also something it's called yeah. supari so when you start oh. you're actually allowed to like you know let's say hit somebody's um Ooh. neck kind of this did you so that's why you always have to have the yeah like, did you the neck low. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be like kind of that's gonna suck if somebody hits you like that there right hey i've seen like injuries like bad injuries yeah. like this mm -hmm. yeah that's why always anytime at any martial arts i would always put my mouth guard Oh teeth yeah, are too expensive. Totally. I'm always saying, man, <laughs> you want to keep them. totally. Yeah, yeah. You have beautiful teeth too. <laughs> <Thanks>. Yeah. <laughs> did, did did you have braces growing up as a kid, or they just yeah, same here. <laughs> a lot of years. So were, were you were you training like judo and having braces too? Just this is just so random. I've never ha actually had this conversation with anybody. You know, you know. Yeah, I had like how do you call them? Like permanent braces too. Yeah. So. Obviously, you put them and like when you fight the, the dentist or the down, cut up your mouth and everything. Right? No, what they give you, it's like, a, you know, the, the material that the candle is made of, like is yeah, it wax? The wax. Yeah. Wax. So they give you like a special kind of wax that you right. have to put on top so you don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But man, this was so I mean, everybody in our age luckily had that braces, but yeah. it was bad. Like after you had to like pick it out. Right. And it was still bleeding, but oh, not as bad, you know, and whatever. Part of the yeah. game, I guess. Wow. So you got through with braces at seven years old, doing judo, doing sumo. And then when did you start your striking, like striking stuff? With MMA, I had started in 2015. Okay. So everything, you know, added together. So yeah. obviously MMA 2015, sumo, I started 2016. Okay. Um, and then striking, I had, yeah, 
started like back then like kind of st- yeah. thing but you know now i feel like i'm i'm definitely on a different level of course like you will always get better you know right well i noticed you have quite a few knockouts how does that feel to knock out a chick <laughs> i'm sorry i'm being bad but like how does it feel to actually get a you know like a knockout with honestly punches? honestly it's like you know, when I first started, because obviously judo is like the gentle sport. And, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You went from one and, and the, to the other. In my very first fights, what I would do is like, because in my mind, like, I was like, I cannot hit or kick somebody, right? Like, I would always you wait know. for the first attack of my opponent and be like, okay, <laughs> if she's in in it, like, I'm in it, you know, like, we, we stick to this kind of same. I don't know, so, like, probably stupid or whatever. So, but then I'm like, okay, like she hits me, I hit her, you know, and then yeah, it is bang, what it is. Bang, 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 back and forth, right? It's fun, right? Do Do you remember? Do you ever recall getting um, punched in the face for the first time? Yeah, <laughs> I I do, and I was like, wow, I actually didn't feel anything because I guess my adrenaline was so high. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I can feel like a little like tension, but you know, it's fine. But only after the fight, you really see what you look like, right? right. I remember like going to my coach, like in the fight, hey, am I swelling up? What's with my eye? Is everything okay? He's like, you're good. And then only after in the picture, I saw that I had like bruises. Oh, yeah. gosh. You know, as I said, heroes have scars. It happens. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's definitely different to actually really hit somebody in the face especially like not like sparring it's, style where you, where you yeah. like take care of each other but like yeah. in a fight with four ounces that's I feel like really. everybody who does that like I really really respect yeah totally I mean you could if you could take a a hit like that to the face god god love you um so the reason for the ask is I I would love for you to tell me about women hit harder what's this about oh here we go Women Hit Harder. This is my brand. Okay. And it's it started as a podcast, okay. as like a video podcast and audio podcast. Nice. And obviously my idea was, you know, my target audience on Instagram and Facebook, for example, was mainly male. And I was like, mm-hmm. what's the matter? Like, where are the females? Yeah. So when I figured maybe, you know, obviously not many women are into that, like fighting thing or whatever, but I felt like what I wanted to try to say was like, hey, get your inspiration and keep your life going, you know? Like, yeah. let's say you really want to do something. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, you know, like, uh. I was <laughs> like, no. Like, I wanted to express with my show and with the people that were my guests, like those yeah. inspirational stories, you know, because everybody started from scratch. And not everybody was successful from the beginning, you know, for everybody who was on the top or whatever, like in the middle or wherever, right. there was a start. There was a start and there's a way up there. And it's all, not always like this. Obviously, it's also like this. Exactly. This. Exactly. So, so anyway, what I wanted to express was like, look, just live your life like do what you wanted to do like be inspired like go out like do what you want to do because it was um I mean there were so many things that had happened like life is fried fragile life mm-hmm. is fragile and the world can be too you know so yeah. man if you don't do it today you might regret it tomorrow so just right. go and do it and so this was it started like it started with like athletes politicians and astronaut um scientists nice. uh, actors Mm. you know I had like everybody as my guests and then first I was thinking if it should only be women then I was like you know they're also good men right and help inspire and also are role models for women whatever so I was like mixing it all up and it was a big success and obviously with moving here I really didn't have so much time to pursue it so I've, since I've been here I've only produced like I think three or four episodes sure but the next one is going to be in November which I'm really looking forward to nice. and then obviously I will keep um publishing and then the women hit harder thing like really took over so yeah um people asked for merch and shirts and gloves and you know and so it's like man this is so good like that's, why not that's excellent and yeah so now i had produced uh, shirts and jackets and my own like performance um women hit harder um design things jackets and hoodies and stuff and now i had produced with my with my sponsor zebra i have produced gloves for women Oh, great. And yeah, they look wow. amazing. Oh, that's good. Wow. That's excellent. Congratulations. That's really it. That's, that's another great accomplishment. And that's something that you'll have for the rest of your life too. And, 
And last year, it's a funny thing, I started doing also like classes for, um, well, not just for women, but also for kids, you know, like mm -hmm. I was helping like kids, like foster care, something like that. It's called the Arche. Anyway, it's in, in Germany. And, you know, there are like kids that where the parents are not rich or they don't have parents or whatever. So I would go and teach them some stuff and, you know, lead them to a good way, like showing that, you know, whatever you love, like pursue it. You can be successful in anything you want to. And obviously it's good to have like some, you know, because we were also talking about, you know, um, abusion at home. Yes. So obviously yeah. I wanted to show them, look. This is what you can do. In the worst case, you probably don't want to do it. But if it happens, yeah. you know, you, you're kind of have like a, you know, you know what to do. Right. And then I started like I was uh, invited to like uh, it's like a club chain. It's called Robinson Club. So I was teaching also women's self-defense, like training, right. self-esteem, yeah. you know, all that yeah. stuff. And they yeah. loved it. Yeah. And now I'm actually doing it in November again, like online for my uh, for Deutsche Welle. Oh, so do you, you teach it online? Well, it's kind of, it's kind of, I kind of have to because I'm here, but I still yeah, wanted yeah. to have me as a coach. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. what I had done is like I produced videos in advance to show okay. some techniques. So sure. I will send the videos and then obviously I will show them like one-to-one. Right. Like -one. So awesome. yeah, this is like women hit harder. Like it, it, it has gotten like an entire package. Awesome. That's excellent. That's really, really great. Wow. I mean, you know, that's just, it, it's great to see women that are doing things outside of like, you know, you're, you're thinking almost ahead for, you have a fight career, but then you also simultaneously are implementing that into um, your brand. It's very, yeah, because I, very yeah, it's true because I'm, I, I'm aware yeah. now that, you know, I'm a role model. Yeah. I'm a role model for yeah. like a lot of like different kind of people, but what I can show is like, obviously healthy lifestyle, all my training routines, but I can also mm -hmm. show how to learn to get better with yourself, appreciate yourself, like with the, you know, whatever I do, I feel like I have a, yeah, I'm a role model. I have a function and I'm aware of it. So I wouldn't do anything, anything like stupid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if I do something stupid, I would probably also like share it. Cause I'm like, Hey, I need your, your guys' help. Not like, what would you do? You know? <laughs> so that's why I feel like with my fans and the people that follow me, I have a great, like, um, interaction out there mm -hmm. and um obviously it's not where it belongs to be because it's like kind of hard with like germany and and america and like in what language am i like doing all that stuff you know mm -hmm. but i feel like at one point there is something going to happen you know oh yeah well it's already happening girl just in case you didn't know sometimes when you're in the middle of it you don't realize it's happening i don't know if you ever who was it um i don't know if it was arnold or who's like oh um Bert, Bert, um, oh God, he old, old time actor. And he, he, I'll think of it after I'll be like, ah, but he was saying, you know, he was on the rise with his career and everything. He was like making movie after movie after movie. And I think he made a comment at one point. He said, I don't think I really appreciated the, where I was. And, um, and, and then all of a sudden it was like, you know, you're at the pinnacle of it and then it starts to, you know, go down and you don't realize it. And then you're trying to like get back up to that like place. And, and uh, he, he, he was just fascinated by how, how it kind of happens and you don't realize it when you're there. And I guess that was my point. I think it was Burt Reynolds. And Burt Reynolds. sometimes yeah, it comes I back to your mind if you don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. And and I always thought that was kind of interesting. And I think of some of these old school guys that, you know, I always liked the action movies and stuff like that. I don't know if you like violent movies or not, or if there's anything that you watch, um, you know, prior thrillers. to, yeah, prior, what's that? I love thrillers. 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 Nice. Yeah. Like something that's scary or something. But um, I want to circle back and I was going to ask um, who who would you say has played a meaningful role in your life's journey and maybe has influenced you in a positive way? <laughs> you know, I feel like everybody that I met in my life or mm. let's, let's say not met, but that I saw maybe on TV or in the news or whatever, you know, I feel like mm. every information that you get mm -hmm. um makes you think about certain things sure. and make you a certain way you know yeah. sometimes I remember back in university during my master's I was there like man I could be working right now I could make so much money you know like whatever yeah. so yeah. then my professor out of a sudden said one sentence 
one sentence, maybe single samples. But in my brain, it was like, boom, wow, now it makes sense. Everything makes so much sense. Like, I get it now. Yeah. So I feel like I cannot talk, like, say any, like, particular person that, you know, really... Mm -hmm. Is all the way, but little pieces, like little pieces. from all the life circumstances, yeah. obviously that I've been through, or you know yeah. where I came from. I feel like this has made me, and like in regards to MMA, obviously there were people that inspired me. Uh, you know, Rhonda, for example, Rhonda Holly. Yeah, like Rhonda as a judoka, she she uh, right. did her transition into MMA, and I was like, wow, right. well, when she she can do it, why can I not do it? You know. Yeah, and um. Yeah, and it, it wasn't even like her real passion to do MMA. It was kind of on the radar. I think her passion now is the WWE. And I think that was always, ever since she was a little kid, she wanted to be a, like, you know, a wrestler or something. And that, it's just funny how, how you know, she opened doors for everybody. I mean, there's others that did, that paved the way for her to really kick it down. But yeah. um, there, there, there was a lot of that. So it's really great seeing even uh, other females that have been involved in martial arts all these years, but now have these tremendous opportunities ahead of them that that can have a, a, so many other career paths because of it, which is I'm really actually, yeah, you're so right. I'm so, yeah. so happy about this. Um, you know, Dana exist. White said it himself, like he yeah. said, like, there's never going to be a woman fighting in that league. Yeah. And yeah. eventually they opened the spot, you know, and all this, the story with the, with the 145 division and UFC yeah. and yeah. Cyborg and, oh my God, this is just so crazy, you know, but yeah. I feel like it's, I feel like it's good that it happened, that it was transparent, that people know mm -hmm. about it and mm -hmm. that they didn't shut down the 145 because honestly, I feel like, look, yeah. there's so, so many tall women out there who love to fight, right? Right. right. They had forced him to lose so much weight to go down to Bantam, which was yeah. so unhealthy, so yeah. unhealthy. Yeah. Like, look, for men, like 145 is like pretty, very like light. Yeah. Why would you not have this for women? Like yeah. even oh. a lightweight. I think it's great to have lightweight out there, man. Right. Why would you stop this? Like, can you name me any like promotion that has lightweight right now? No. For women? No. PFL started it. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. It, it, but, the, the challenge with that is what's really great with, um, say, Invicta Shannon knows that it's, it's hard for females to get fights and she will allow you know, you got to let her know, but she allows you to go, you know, have a fight in another promotion where some of them like PFL, you sign UFC, you sign strike force or, or Bellator. Now you sign your, your, you have to stay within those organizations, right. whether or not, I mean, Kayla Harrison barely had hardly any fights for the longest time. I think, you know, like I, I always felt bad for her because she, you know, she would voice a little bit about it, but there weren't any other women that were stepping up to fight for PFL. And I don't know why, you know, negotiations, who knows why that didn't happen for her. I mean, she did have some success, a lot of success there, but she didn't have the fights and would have loved to have seen her have some other opportunities uh, for fights, but the women were tied up with other promotions, which... I think you've landed in a great, my, my point being is you've landed in a great place um, contract wise with, with Invicta. You're going to have a lot more opportunity there than I think you would probably anywhere else, even though I should, probably should have kept my mouth shut about that. No, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I really appreciate, like, I'm really glad that, you know, I, I'm with Invicta now and yeah, I feel like it's great, especially like knowing that, you know, it's a feeder league, feeder league for the UFC as well, you know, yeah. for whatever. It is. So anyway, like even that, like I love the idea of having a women's league. This is what yes. I'm actually trying to say. Yeah. This is just great. And like, I mean, you have seen it yourself, like throughout the years in your job. Yeah. It is like bare. And also for Kayla now, like, yeah. I mean, I'm training with her a lot. Like we have the same yeah. team, right? Yeah. So like her next fight actually isn't featherweight. What is she, she has... next? When does she? She's doing featherweight. She's in November. Julia bought PFL. She is. Oh, good. That's great. Wow. That's but I mean, awesome. Kyla. Like honestly, for her, I feel like she is a lightweight. Why would you take this away from her? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Same with Cyborg. I feel like yeah. You know, she's I mean, always that's... been like a, yeah. a real yeah. like actually like Cyborg would have belonged in the lightweight, but featherweight right. is good for her. But they made her going down to Bantam because there was no other division, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So really, like those two things, like uh, let's say parenthood and fighting and this like way and thing. Yeah, they, they have to get better for sure. Like definitely, have some, yeah, they, they need some more regulations for for sure.
Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I, I, I never kind of understood, you know, um, the, the weight cuts, the way they, they made them. I mean, they, they've gotten better where I think you guys have a, a full day ahead, like ahead of your fight. So you can kind of get back to normal weight, rehydrate and all that. Um, but the weight cuts just seem so, oh, I, I just remember seeing Chris Cyborg and hers. Oh like, yeah. This documentary. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was, I was like, oh, cause you know, she, she, she took a lot of flack. And people were always, you know, you know, dogging her and stuff. And then when that video came out, it was like, yeah, this is super painful. It was really brave of her to do that and show people. I know. And I really about. just watched it the other day and I was thinking, you know what? Like, yeah. it was so good. Like, because, you know, yeah. some some fans, they know what we go through. That's not right. just 15 minutes of a fight or let's say 25. Right. It is so much more than that. Like how much you sacrifice in the wake up. But, you know, like it's. This is like one thing, but the really health problem with like the kidneys and the yes, blood thickening exactly. up. Cyborg exactly. needed to take take a long break after that because her body right. was so yeah so done yeah. And I think this is good. For example, in one championships, how they do it, like with the percentages, yeah. like they they always check the people for hydration and dehydration. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they they want people to really fight in their weight, which is I think it's right. Great. I think uh, yeah. I. I I mean, I love how they handle their, their fighters and stuff too. I mean, um, they, they do a really good job there too, as well, for sure. So can you share maybe a personal habit or daily routine that contributes to your success? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I could like talk forever about that stuff. Yeah. I'm so like, I just realized, honestly, like when you sleep somewhere else or when you yeah. like go travel somewhere, yeah. you actually just only realize how much you stick to your routines, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Sometimes I'm tired. I want to go to bed. I'm like, oh, no, I have to do this, 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 this. And it's like one hour later until I go to bed or something. Yeah, yeah. But one thing like what I always do, I wake up. I'm really bad at snoozing. So I really set my al alarm early. <laughs> Uh -huh. in order to get up at the right time and I know I, I'm so aware of it but I cannot do anything about it it's not that I'm moody or something I'm just very tired mm -hmm. well so so the first, you do a lot you need your rest <laughs> the first thing I do in the morning obviously I uh, I brought my German coffee machine it's a Jura like a like a big like machine uh -huh. so I have my, my really nice coffee then I obviously would shake my weight this is like a little obsession. I hope at one point it's going to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when it comes to the fighting, you're like always stepping on the scale after everything you did. I bet. Yeah. Maybe let's say you walk you on the floor. I'm like, okay, let's step on the scale. Let's see. Yeah, right. <laughs> do you have a but, uh, coffee that you have right now? Or do you, are you kind of avoiding the caffeine or do you do no. caffeine? If you take no. caffeine from me, it will not work. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like I have a really low uh, heart, heart rate, heart pressure. No. Blood, okay. pressure. blood pressure and i feel like if i don't have that i'm like you know oh yeah when you're out you're out then huh wow so but my other ritual for example is before i go to bed um i started meditating like nighttime meditation before it was like meditation what yeah you know? yeah yeah but i feel like this actually really helps to calm yourself a little bit yes. and also to be aware that it's a good thing to feel the feelings that you feel like let right. them happen let them happen don't push them away it's okay to have them yeah. just learn to deal with it you know like be aware of them so and then i'm on my acupressure mat it's like a you know with needles so i always sleep on that and i have my stuffed animals around me all right tell me about that an acupressure bed with needles yeah it's like a it's like a mat yeah and you you put it underneath like you you lay on it with your back yeah, and you know acu acupuncture, which means subcutan, it's like goes through the skin. Right. But acu acu pressure right. stays on the skin. Right. So it's um like in the in regards to Chinese medicine, it says you have like twelve body meridians, and if yeah. they're like out of place with this like yeah. needles, yeah, they get in the right order. They they help yourself calm down to relax. First, it's like so much pain, and you really have to take care, like focus on your breathing and stuff. Yes, you're like. And once at first it's cold and then you feel like it's getting like warm. Wow. And once you like really feel your breathing, you, you most likely are to fall asleep. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. That sounds cool. I, I might like that. <laughs> 
I love it. it like, like, I feel like it sounds I, I like a, an age it. torture device. <laughs> you know, like in one of those, I don't know. <laughs> but the needles are like probably this long. Okay. So it's not so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds really kind of interesting. I'm like, wow, that's cool. So um, you were in a documentary last year. You are strong. Um, was that something that just came to you naturally just because, I mean, the opportunity or were people, did they, was it because of your background maybe in your, your training and stuff? It was um, with, with um, how do you say this? Regisseur? With Lasse Buchop. He's really good. So I met with him through a friend that I got to know at work, like, uh -huh. you know, doing like shooting for Deutsche Welle, DW. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anyway, I was sitting down with him talking and then we, uh, you know, made plans like what we want to show. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> as I said, like, I'm aware that I'm a role model, at least yeah. in Germany <clears throat> or in yeah. Europe. So we were like trying to show that, that it's fine to love who you want, that you can dress like mm -hmm. as like whatever you want. Mm -hmm. That it's okay to pursue the job that you want to do. That it's okay to be a certain way, but not fitting in somebody's, you know, pattern or whatever. Right. So, and also, luckily, there were, like, um, actors, like, well-known actors from Germany that also were part of that, you know, documentary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And working with them was just so good. And I think the, the movie really was a success. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it. I'm going to have to go check it out. I didn't know it was out or whatever. I'm going to have to look for it. Is can it be seen anywhere on like you know any of the like TV stations over here, or do you have to kind of look maybe on YouTube or something like it's, that? It's it's on YouTube for sure. It's on my yeah. Instagram too. It uh, yeah, I think yeah, you can find it anywhere. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll check with you later on that because I'd like to put it in my my blog post or whatever along with your stuff because that 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 I was like I got that last minute. I mean, like this has really been a bit of a like a crunch for me, like trying to learn about, like get like personal information about all you fighters. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because I haven't done this in a few years actually. And then um, uh, found out last minute that Invicta is coming to Boston. And I was just like, what? I did one of these? How could I not know about this? And then I heard from some of the other fighters that it was kind of a last minute thing. And I'm like, wow, this is so great. I can't believe they're coming up this way there's been a lot of a lot of yeah. years of I was gonna say because uh from the information I got first it was supposed to be in June and obviously had I had got I had gotten ready for June yeah. and then it was post kind of postponed to September already ah. now in October so it was kind of like a roller coaster thing you know in yes, regards to I training heard. and staying yeah. ready and stuff wow so when it was finally confirmed I was like hell yes yeah I I just was blown away that it was actually coming up here so it's really it's really great to, to be able to see all you guys up here and stuff coming uh the, the end of the week was there any time um because this was an aha for me leading into my next question this was a, ha a true aha can can you uh think of a time maybe in your martial arts journey or just life journey where you experienced a, a true like aha like the light bulb went off you had like a eureka moment of realization a weaker moment uh, eureka like the light bulb going off like woo, ah. you know like eureka like i found gold honestly i feel like every day i'm training there's this like weaker every day one percent better you know yeah and even if you're like so tired and exhausted and you feel like i cannot do it anymore mm. and you still keep going and the feeling after mm -hmm. no but honestly one learning is like obviously you have to train mm -hmm. good and like hard but mm -hmm. also smart. Mm. This is definitely one of my my things. Like not just because you train like your ass off yeah. and you know kill <laughs> yourself. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it helps. Yeah. yeah. Like the, as older as you get, the smarter you have to be. I mean, at the gym there are some people that are so young. You know, one of a few yeah. of my training partners are only like in their beginning of right. Beginnings of 20 or something. So, yeah. you know, being 33, it's different. I can tell it. Like, I've experienced it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like, train smart. Yeah. But also um, be honest to yourself, you know, like, listen to your inner voice. Because mm -hmm. sometimes your body is really speaking to you, like, hey, if you go to, to do this practice today, 
Mm. I know I'm going to injure myself or yeah. I know you will injure. Right. So you have to be aware of that. Like really listen, if it's whatever it is, like, you know, your, your gut feeling, your intuition, yeah. whatever your body's telling you stuff. Yeah. And there are moments where you feel like, okay, today I really should not go. I mean, you can still train, but not with other people, you know, especially right. in the combat, maybe mm -hmm. your muscle is tired or your bone or whatever. And then you do a mistake and yeah. that might lead to a major injury. Exactly. So I have gotten better in that so much. That's really good that you have that self-awareness and then, and then you're trusting your intuition to you're listening to that inner voice that says, cause I, yeah, I was so bad when I was young, I was so bad. I'm like, sometimes I was regretting like how bad I was to myself. Yeah. Like I would never listen. Like, you know how you have the volume like yes. button in the radio. Yeah. I'm like I've always like put it loud, quiet until, you know, bang. And then you're and, like, wow, I, I'm having better success. And I, it, you know, I'm not like, and I feel better. You might be doing something else, say, to avoid the injury. Like the day you you don't show up for, I don't know, sparring practice. But instead, maybe you're just going to work on the heavy bag to, to stay exactly. safe. You know, like exactly. you still do your due diligence, but you do it in a different way just to make sure that you don't have a run into problems. Because um, this is like really in our business, like those injuries. Yeah. They take forever to heal. Yeah. And once you have them, if you don't rest it, you, yeah. you know, with compensation in the body, it might affect other parts as well. And yeah, absolutely. it's like a vicious circle. It totally is. I, I've, I've had several injuries, so I, I, I know. And then I used to um, I used to work with the fighters, um, some, some of the male fighters back in the day to keep them like the week before, you know, during their fight camp. And they would like just kill each other way back when. And and they would have all these like, you know, tears here, there, like just a wreck. Now, they, I don't think they train like that. I think they're better, like they have better coach. Well, not better coaches, but like their coaches are more aware of that. Maintain that rest is balance. also as important as training. Yes, exactly. So they, they know that, you you know, like even you can go in the gym and do the hardcore, but you have to do the hardcore sleeping and resting too. <laughs> um. Just a couple last questions. Um, anything you could share, like anything that no one might know about you, like a secret about you that nobody knows? Well, luckily it's still a secret. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> How about just something nobody knows about you? Like as, you know, just, you know. Well, when I was younger, <laughs> like I used to sing in a choir wow see that's something that's cool. and you know I just started it because at you know back in school when you went to this like after school thing they put uh -huh. you to rest like you needed to rest for like an hour and then do your homework and stuff yeah. because I didn't want to rest <laughs> now I'm like can I can I please go rest whatever anyway because I didn't want to rest I was starting me and my friend we would start the choir <laughs> Oh my goodness. What was but, your favorite song? What did you sing? <laughs> oh, we, we sang like all kinds of stuff. Like I was um back in the days, so my voice was really like high, very high. Oh, I bet. And uh, so, yeah, we, we actually really had fun. It was really fun. Like we really loved it. Yeah. But now like speaking of like singing, I'm like, I feel so embarrassed. Like when people let say to me, hey, let's go for karaoke. I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> just going to cheer for you. You know, I'm fine. You know, I, I just can't get the words down. Like, I mean, I have to have like, you know, like big now big words to see them, but like to follow, like if I was going to do karaoke, I could never do that. I'd be like, so I'd be embarrassing. I'm so like, I think I sound like a good singer, but that's not really what comes out. <laughs> it's like more like a, I don't know, maybe a, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's tough. Um, so anything you'd like to share, you know, to your opponent, <laughs> Rad Riley, before the fight, like anything? No, else, you know, not really. I'm not a okay. trash talk person at all. Okay. I have, I have all the respect in the world for everybody who was in that business. You know, I appreciate us so much, yeah. like going there, training before making the weight, you know, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's no need to disrespect anybody or to say anything. I'm just looking forward let's have some fun. Let's do fair play. This is yeah. what matters to me. Cause I don't want to have anything dirty. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. fair play. Let's have some fun. Let's do what we love. And that's it right. for me. Right. Any shout outs to uh, sponsors or anything like that? 
teammates? Well, first of all, thanks very much, everybody who was part of my journey. Mm -hmm. So I thank, obviously, my 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 gym, American Top Team, and Randori Pro. I thank my coaches. I thank uh, Harley Davidson. I thank Zebra, Relax and Get Results, and and all the supplements that I have, Prozies and SSA supplements. And thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And let's go for more. Team Dorney is coming. Woo! Look at those guns. <laughs> the twin of the beach girl. <laughs> uh, that. Wow, that was awesome. I got to get a picture of that. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> you make me blushing now. See this? Oh, this is also one of my secrets, actually. Mm -hmm. Like when people say something like, like nice mm -hmm. or like, you know, I, I, I blush so much and get really red. So I try not to let it affect me. So how, yeah. okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Strike a pose. <laughs> Do a little Madonna. <laughs> That's cute. Well, this has been so great. I thank you so much for coming on the show. You know, short notice, I'm going to be getting this out as quickly as I can, but I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time to to join join here at, at my my little podcast here for women's mixed martial arts. It was a pleasure getting to to know you. Good luck in your fight um, on Friday. It's Friday. Best. Can't wait. And um, I'll see you soon. Thank you. I thank you so much. I also wanted to say thanks for like doing this podcast for women's MMA, WMMA, because I love it. It's important. And I think it's support. It's the greatest support we could get, you know, also supporting each other, you know, um, see that we are not alone. Like the girls, they really can change the world. They can make maybe a new division happening. They can like, you know, we can do so many things together when we stick together and not just and not feel like we are always enemies because we are not. We're actually on the same boat. Eventually, we have to fight each other. But this is the business we choose. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think across the board, most of the women feel like that. Um, every every single one that I ask that question to, you know, just a little like, you know, whatever. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of rivalry. It's the second time you get to fight, you know, your opponent or whatever. So there could be a little, you know, a little bit of something there. But it's nothing. It's always positive vibes which I really, I, I really admire about um, when, when I get chance to interview all these female fighters and, and it, it's the majority have the same sort of attitude. I just like to maybe just, you know, can, can we get something going on here a little bit? Just sometimes just for fun. Like one of my questions just on the end is usually what fighter do you love to hate? <laughs> oh my God. What fighter do you love to hate? You know what? And my inside myself, I don't feel hate. The only time I really feel like disrespect is when people give me shit. Yeah. Like when they then they treat me disrespectful, not loyal. You know, this right. is the only time where I feel this, but it's never hate. Yeah. It's just disrespect because I'm like, you know, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm. I'm. But I know and read. There was a the, hate the... as entertainment, like you know, like more as entertainment, not like a visceral kind of hate. But yeah, you know what? But if you want to do this kind of fucking entertainment, excuse me for my words. Yeah. Just oh, go I, to I, WWE, I, man. Yeah. yeah. Like MMA is one of the most violent sports in the sure. in the world. Yeah. And I feel like obviously they want to sell tickets, and I get it. And I, if I was a matchmaker, obviously I want to have like characters out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can be a character without. Uh, without treating people badly or saying bad stuff or that's disrespecting interesting, right? some Isn't family that members. Interesting? That's how our culture is. That that's what they want to see, the entertainment that way. I mean, I know I I mean we we we'll chuckle, we'll hear something. I actually don't follow it so much anymore, like uh what's going on, all the trash talking and stuff, but people love it. They love it. It's bizarre to me. Sometimes I wonder if this is honestly more an American thing. Because I figured in Germany, people really don't like WWE so much and this trash talk thing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it must be something cultural or something. Yeah, well, I, it's can, maybe, yeah. I can remember growing up watching WWE and and I don't remember necessarily the trash talking, but just, you know, them throwing around, thing, you know, like big guys and getting in and and just the excitement of it. I don't remember their whole like dynamic of, of, of um 
what do you call it? Like just, you know, like you say, the trash talking and they're like, I'm going to get you and whatever. But I mean, that that happens on on the major levels of even the UFC. That's what actually, you know, got Conor McGregor where he is today. Ronda Rousey and, and Misha Tate. That, that whole dynamic is what really kind of opened doors too. So not that we see it all the time, but there's a little bit, there's a few people that tried it more recently. Like um, when, when um, just more recently uh, when Amanda Nunes was left and, and didn't fight a certain individual. <laughs> oh my God, this was. And, and yeah. And, and, and so that was, that was, I mean, people were just like, yeah, enough already. Can you just stifle? <laughs> I'm not going to say names, but everybody. No, I, rem- I remember. About. I remember <laughs> very well. Yeah. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. Amanda Nunes is a rock star and she's, you know, like. She hey, let me, real, let me like, add I'm something cool. to that. Cause let me add something to Nunes. Cause I think this success story is so great. It is like, obviously she came from Brazil. She moved yeah. here. She, you know, she would share like a place with people you know yeah and then now actually like after her like last win what I really liked so much was like first of all her wife Nina was there the baby was there yeah they really took time like the show was already over and I know like the media was already like the you know media time like cut out cut out we have to go with it but they let it go because they knew like this would sell so much so anyway it was Amanda Nunes a female lesbian fighter in that cage with her baby and the wife after yeah. a big win. Yeah. And then obviously you saw Dana like being like so hyped. And yeah. then they had beer in the cage. And I feel like Amanda Nunes is the perfect role model for like that kind of stuff, you know, like yeah. fighting. I mean, you that's know, so family orientated, you know, right? like it's just so family. And it's really, yeah, it was great. And I was like, I was like, man, I love it. This was. Yeah such a great vibe and i think she's a great human being and yeah. um so i was happy that this actually happened yeah 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 same here and and um i i mean she's one of my faves and i always knew she from the moment i saw her the first time fighting i was like yeah she's going to be somebody i i could just tell she's getting warmed up she's getting warmed up she came up to boston years ago to um uh help um Kaylini Medeiros, uh, who was who fought uh, years ago on uh, Invicta's card, and fought locally up here. But I mean, just because she was Brazilian, she came up here and they developed a really good friendship. She she came up here from Florida and stuff and would help her train. I was like, wow, you know, yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, ah, yeah. 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 Well, again, thank you so much, Julia. It's really been a pleasure getting to know you. I hope our paths will cross. I'm definitely crossing come come this week, but like, I hope they 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 cross again. I, I really enjoyed our talk. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and uh, likewise. <laughs> Hey, so how about that? That was a great interview with Julia Dornay. I'd like to thank her for coming on the show and wish her the greatest of luck uh, this week at her Invicta 54 fight against uh, Rad Riley Martinez. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review because it helps people find the show. And on the review, mention Julia Dornay and how she might have inspired and motivated you because I know she did me. (laughs) And if you liked what you heard today and are eager to hear more, never miss an episode from Evolve WMMA by remembering to subscribe or download on iTunes or you can find us on Podomatic and Spotify at Evolve Women's MMA. Or if you prefer to watch, You can find a new episode on YouTube at Evolve Women's MMA. And go ahead and check out our website at www.evolvewmma.com. And lastly, if nothing else, you can simply follow us at facebook.com backslash I love WMMA. This is Shelly Devine. Until next time, thanks for listening.